Then Ariel said, Here are the angels who have cohabitated with women, appointed their leaders, being numerous in appearance, made men profane, and caused them to err, so that they sacrificed to devils as to gods. For in the great day there shall be a judgment with which they shall be judged until they are consumed, and their wives also shall be judged, who led astray the angels of heaven, that they might salute them. And I, Enoch, I alone saw the likeness of the end of all things, nor did any human being see it as I saw it. These are the names of the angels who watch. Ariel, one of the holy angels who presides over clamor and terror, Raphael, one of the holy angels who presides over the spirits of men. Raguel, one of the holy angels who inflicts punishment on the world and the luminaries. Michael, one of the holy angels who, presiding over human virtue, commands the nations. Sarakil, one of the holy angels who presides over the spirits of the children of the men that transgress. Gabriel, one of the holy angels who presides over Ikasat, over paradise, and over the cherubim. Then I made a circuit to a place which nothing was completed, and there I beheld neither the tremendous workmanship of an exalted heaven, nor an established earth, but a desolate spot, prepared and terrific. There, too, I beheld seven stars of heaven, bound in it together like great mountains and like a blazing fire. I exclaimed, For what species of crime have they been bound? Why have they been removed to this place? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me and who conducted me, answered, Enoch, wherefore dost thou ask? Wherefore reasons with thyself and anxiously inquire? These are those of the stars which have transgressed the commandment of the Most High God and are here bound until the infinite number of the days of their crimes be completed. From thence I afterwards passed on to another terrific place, where I beheld the operation of a great fire blazing and glittering, in the midst of which there was a division. Columns of fire struggled together to the end of the abyss, and deep was their descent. But neither its measurement nor magnitude was I able to discover. Neither could I perceive its origin. Then I exclaimed, How terrible is this place, and how difficult to explore. Ariel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered and said, Enoch, why art thou alarmed and amazed at this terrific place, at the sight of this place of suffering? This, he said, is the prison of the angels, and here they are kept forever. From thence I proceeded to another spot, where I saw on the west a great and lofty mountain, a strong rock, and four delightful places. Internally it was deep, capacious, and very smooth, as smooth as if it had been rolled over, both deep and dark to behold. And Raphael, one of the holy angels who were with me, answered and said, These are the delightful places where the spirits, the souls of the dead, will be collected. For them they were formed, and here it will be collected all the souls of the sons of men. These places in which they dwell shall they occupy until the day of judgment and until their appointed period. Their appointed period will be long, even until the great judgment. And I saw the spirits of the sons of men who were dead, and their voices reached to heaven while they were accusing. Then I inquired of Raphael, an angel who was with me, and said, Whose spirit is that, the voice of which reaches to heaven and accuses? He answered, saying, This is the spirit of Abel, who was slain by Cain, his brother. And who will accuse that brother until his seed be destroyed from the face of the earth? Until his seed perish from the seed of the human race. At that time, therefore, I inquired respecting him and respecting the general judgment, saying, Why is one separated from another? And he answered, Three separations have been made between the spirits of the dead. And thus have the spirits of righteous been separated, namely, by a chasm, 
by water and by light above it. And in the same way, likewise, are sinners separated when they die and are buried in the earth, judgment not overtaking them in their lifetime. Here their souls are separated, moreover abundant, abundant in their suffering until the time of the great judgment, the castigation and the torment of those who eternally execrate whose souls are punished and bound there forever. And thus has it been from the beginning of the world. Thus has there existed a separation between the souls of those who utter complaints and of those who watch for their destruction to slaughter them in the day of sinners. A receptacle of this sort has been formed for the souls of unrighteous men and of sinners, of those who have completed crime and associated with the impious whom they resemble. Their soul shall not be annihilated in the day of judgment. Neither shall they arise from this place. Then I blessed God and said, Blessed be my Lord, the Lord of glory and of righteousness, who reign, reigns over all forever and ever. From thence I went to another place towards the west until the extremities of the earth, when I beheld a fire blazing and running along without cessation, which intermitted its course neither by day nor night, but continued always the same. I inquired, saying, What is this? which never ceases. And Raguel, one of, my holy, one of the holy angels who were with me, answered and said, This blazing fire which thou beholdest running towards the west is that of all the luminaries of heaven. I went from thence to another place and saw a mountain of fire flashing both day and night. I proceeded towards it and perceived seven splendid mountains which were all different from each other. Their stones were brilliant and beautiful. All were brilliant and splendid to behold, and beautiful was their surface. Three mountains were towards the east, and strengthened by being placed one upon another, and three were towards the south, strengthened in a similar manner. There, there were likewise deep valleys which did not approach each other, and the seventh mountain was in the midst of them. In length they all resembled the seat of a throne, and odiferous trees surrounded them. Among these there was a tree of an unceasing smell. Nor of those which were in Eden was there one of all the fragrant trees which smelt like this. Its leaf, its flower, its bark never withered, and its fruit was beautiful. Its fruit resembled the cluster of the palm. I exclaimed, Behold, this tree is goodly in aspect, pleasing in its leaf, and the sight of its fruit is delightful to the eye. And Michael, one of the holy and glorious angels who were with me, and one who presided over them, answered, and said, Enoch, why dost thou inquire respecting the odor of this tree? Why art thou inquisitive to know of it, to know it? Then I, Enoch, replied to him and said, Concerning everything I am desirous of instruction, but particularly concerning this tree. He answered me, saying, That mountain which thou beheldest, the extent of whose head resembles the seat of the Lord, will be the seat on which shall sit the holy and great Lord of glory, the everlasting King, when he shall come and descend to visit the earth with goodness. And that tree, of an agreeable smell, not one of carnal odor, there should be no power to touch until the period of the great judgment. When all shall be punished and consumed forever, this shall be bestowed on the righteous and humble. The fruit of this tree shall be given to the elect, for towards the north, life shall be planted in the holy place, towards the habitation of the everlasting king. Then shall they greatly rejoice and exult in the holy one. The sweet odor shall enter into their bones, and they shall live a long life on the earth, as thy forefathers have lived. Neither in their day shall sorrow, distress, trouble, and punishment afflict them. And I bless the Lord of glory the everlasting king, because he has prepared this tree for the saints, formed it, and declared that he would give it to them. From thence I proceeded to the middle of the earth, and beheld a happy and fertile spot, which contained branches continually sprouting from the trees which were planted in it. There I saw a holy mountain, and underneath it water on the eastern side, which flowed towards the south. And I saw also on the east another mountain as high as that, between them were deep but not wide valleys. 
Water ran towards the mountain to the west of this, and the underneath there was likewise another mountain. It was a valley, but not a wide one. Below it, and in the midst of them, there were other deep and dry valleys toward the extremity of the three. All these valleys, which were deep but not wide, consisted of a strong rock with a tree which was planted in them. And I wondered at the rock and at the valleys, being extremely surprised. And I said, what means this blessed land, all these lofty trees and the accursed valley between them? Then Ariel, one of the holy angels who were with me, replied, This valley is the accused, the accursed, of the accursed forever. Here shall be collected all who utter with their mouths unbecoming language against God and speak harsh things of his glory. Here shall they be collected. Here shall be their territory. In the latter days, an example of judgment shall be made of them in righteousness before the saints. All those who have received mercy shall forever, all their days, bless God, the everlasting King. And at the period of judgment shall they bless Him for His mercy as He has distributed it to them. Then I blessed God, addressing myself to Him and making mention, as was meet, of His greatness. From thence I proceeded towards the east, to the middle of the mountain in the desert, the level surface, only of which I perceived, was full of trees and the sea alluded to, and the water leaped down upon it. There appeared a cataract composed of many cataracts, both towards the west and towards the east. Upon one side were trees, on the other side were water and dew. Then I went to another place from the desert towards the east of that mountain which I had approached. There I beheld choice trees, particularly those which produce the sweet-smelling drugs frankincense and myrrh, and trees unlike to each other. And over it, above them, was the elevation of the eastern mountain at no great distance. I likewise saw another place with valleys of water which never wasted, where I perceived a god goodly tree which in smell resembled Zasan Kinon. Towards the side of these valleys I perceived cinnamon with a sweet odor. Over them I advanced towards the east. Then I beheld another mountain containing trees from which water flowed like Nikitro, its name was Sarira and Kalbaniba. And upon this mountain I beheld another mountain upon which were trees of Alba. These trees were full like almond trees and strong, and when they produced fruit it was superior to all perfume. After these things, surveying the entrances of the north above the mountains, I perceived seven mountains replete with pure, nard, odiferous trees, cinnamons, and papyrus. From thence I passed on above the summits of these mountains to some distance eastwards and went over the Erythridean Sea. When I was advanced far beyond it, I passed along the angel Zatil and arrived at the Garden of Righteousness. In this garden, I beheld, among other trees, some which were numerous and large and which flourished there. Their fragrance was agreeable and powerful, and their appearance both varied and elegant. The tree of knowledge also was there, of which if anyone eats, he becomes endowed with great wisdom. It was like a species of the tyramin tree, bearing fruit which resembled grapes, extremely Time, and its fragrance extended to a considerable distance. I exclaimed, how beautiful is this tree and how delightful is its appearance. Then holy Raphael, an angel who was with me, answered and said, this is a tree of knowledge, of which thy ancient father and thy aged mother ate, who were before thee, and who obtaining knowledge, their eyes were opened and knowing themselves to be naked, were expelled from the garden. From thence I went on towards the extremities of the earth, where I saw large beasts, different from each other, birds, various in their countenance and forms, as well as with note of different sounds. To the east of these beasts, I perceived the extremities of the earth. For heaven ceased, the gates of heaven stood open, beheld the celestial stars come forth. I numbered them as they proceeded out of the gate and wrote them all down as they came out one by one according to their number. 